amazing. So good. Well, we're going to get into the Word of God this morning, and we've been doing a series on the book of Psalms. And I want to encourage you, if you, if you haven't yet uh, got, you know, got into the book of Psalms and open it up to get into it, there's a Bible plan we have you can jump on, um, and you can open the Scriptures, get the Word of God in you. Who knows the Word of God changes you, amen? The Word of God is our foundation. In a world that's gone crazy with values, values on sexuality, values on, ha- uh, on, on different views and, and political uh, crazy things and things that we saw in the Olympics. Man, we've got to build our life on the Word of God. Amen? We've got to build our life on what the Word of God says. Not just what pop culture says. Not just what popular opinion says. But what does God's Word say for our life? And the only way we do that is if we get it inside of us. We, 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 we've got to meditate on it, get the Scriptures inside our heart and inside our life, and then that's going to flow out of us. It's going to start to shape you and transform you. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. So don't be conformed to the patterns and the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We renew our mind in the Word of God by holding on to what God says about our life. When our mind defaults to negative, when our mind defaults to, oh, it's never going to work out, where is God and all this, we come back to the Word of God and declare that over our life. Amen? The Word of God is our foundation. And so I want to encourage you to get into the Word of God for yourself. How's that going for you? How's your walk with God going? Don't let it just be the revelation on Sunday. Don't let it just be your pastor's revelation or your life group leader's revelation. Get into the Word of God for yourself. Then when you hear the revelation from a pastor or leader, that even, that e- even just more revelation comes to life on the inside because you've been hearing God for yourself and getting into the Word. Amen? You know what? Sometimes, I read the, sometimes I'm reading the Word and I'm like getting so much. Other times it's just, okay, yeah, cool. That was cool. And that's okay. But you do it consistently, and it starts to build your life. It starts to shape you, transform you, and strengthen you as a believer. Amen? So I want to encourage you to get into the Word of God. Well, we're going to go to Psalm 46 this morning. Psalm 46. If you've got a Bible, or um, whether it's a physical Bible or a device, I'd love you to get this out. As we're just going to be going upon line upon line, passage upon passage, unpacking, Psalm 46. Psalm 46. It says to the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah, a song for Alamoth. This was a song for Alamoth is the young ladies, a song for the, for the ladies in the choir to sing over the congregation, over the people. It was a song. They were coming together, a hymn. And if you want to know the context of this, this is in a time, and and a number of the Psalms are written in times of war, in times of incredible hardship and incredible crisis. One scholar actually believes that this Psalm was written at a time where the people were totally surrounded by an army, by an enemy ready to attack. So it's written in a time of war, in a time where where fear is all around of their safety, where they're not sure if they're going to be able to stay in this place anymore, where they're going to be attacked. They're not sure about how their family's going to go. Are they going to be safe? Are they going to be okay? It's written in a time of war and a time of crisis. And, and what they do is they decide that they're going to sing. They're going to sing and declare the goodness of God. Even amongst the times of uncertainty, they're going to declare, and this is the first part, God is our refuge and strength. In the midst of crisis, I want to encourage you, let's be a people that declare that God is our refuge and strength. Refuge is about a safe place. Another translation says fortress. He is our safe place. The one who we can turn to and is safe. If you think of refuge, you know, we think of 
uh, different r- r- refuges, a woman's refuge or, or a children's refuge. It's a place where people go and are rescued, are safe and made whole. And God is the one who we can run to, to find hope, to find safety. And secondly, strength. God is the strength of our life. I love how they, they don't declare that their strength was in the chariots or the, the, the different weapons that they had, but their strength was in God. And in the same way, your strength is not in your talent, your ability, or, or, or in the, the possessions or things that you have. Your strength is in God. When you go through a crisis, when you go through a challenge, and life will bring crises and challenges and hardships. It will bring incredible times of suffering, times where you feel like you cannot go on, times where there's uncertainty around family, around health, around finances. But God is our refuge and strength. Amen. The second part of this is He's a very present help in trouble. He's not absent in your trouble. He doesn't disappear in your trouble. He's very present with you in your trouble. He is a very present help in a time of need. God is our helper. He is our helper and He is with us. The next part of this scripture goes on and says, Therefore we will not fear. It's a pretty big statement in a time where there's wars and battles and deaths and hardship. They make this declaration. They sing it out. We will not fear. Even though the earth be removed. This is obviously poetic language. Even if there's earthquakes, man, and mountains are carried into the midst of the sea. Verse 3. Even though the waters roar, even if there's floods, even if there's, there's, there's crazy storms, even though the mountains shake with, with its swelling, we will not fear. Then it says cellar, which means to pause and reflect on this. To take a moment to pause and reflect. We will not fear. It's a pretty big statement to make when your world is crashing around you. When an army is knocking on the edge of your city threatening you, and here you are, you declare that we're not going to fear. No matter what comes our way, no matter what crisis, no matter what happens in the world, how could they make such a statement and write this in a song in a time of such crisis? Well, the therefore we will not fear comes just before because God will help us. He's our refuge and He's our strength. When God is our source, we can find incredible peace by focusing on His goodness and His strength. Because God's help is greater than man's crisis. The help that God offers is greater than any crisis or storm that we can face. And God is so good and He is for us. And so we cannot live in fear. Fear is a great dream thief. It robs you of your future. It robs you of future opportunities. Fear tries to, it steals joy, anxiety, and and being overwhelmed, and and it steals the joy on the inside. It brings fear, and fear cripples you. You feel like you can't go on anymore, but if we can come to God in His presence, not saying that everything in your outer world will change in that moment, but something will change in your inner world through hardships and through hard times, through grief and loss, if we can come into His presence and realize the wonderful joy and peace that God offers, we find a sense of safety and refuge. Then in verse 4, it goes on and says, There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn, just when the, at first light, God will help. The funny thing about this in verse 4 is there's no river in Jerusalem. So here it declares, there's a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, 
Jerusalem, the holy place of the tabernacle. There's no river in Jerusalem. There's the Jordan River, which is further around in Israel. But in Jerusalem, the city of God, there is no river. There's only a spring. Now, in the Middle East, water is seen as such a precious resource because it's mostly desert. Water is seen as incredibly a precious source of life for humanity, for the animals, for the, for the vegetation. Water is seen as so precious. And the river that makes glad the city of God or brings joy to the people of God, it's talking about here, is the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the river who streams, who touches our life and brings joy inside our heart, brings joy to the people of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit brings joy to the church. The Holy Spirit brings life to the church. And he declares this, that there is a a, a river that brings joy to God's people. Even amongst crisis, you can find a sense of joy. Even amongst incredible pain, you can find a sense of joy in the presence of God. Because get this, joy is not in things. Our joy is not found in things. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So my joy is not in circumstance. My joy is not in everything going well in my life. The writer of Philippians, Paul, says, My joy is in the Lord. My joy comes. God is my source of joy. See, happiness is about what's happening around us. It's up and down, dependent upon my circumstance. But the joy that God gives and in Christ is an everlasting source of joy when, we, when our source of joy becomes Christ. Amen? So it says the holy place, the tabernacle of the Most High God, the tabernacle was in Jerusalem. Zara talked about it before. Not knowing what I'm preaching on, talked about it before. The tabernacle, the most holy place where the very presence of God dwelt. And this is why the writer declares God is in the midst of Jerusalem. So it's going to be okay. The presence of God is here with us in our city, in our church. And so we shall not be moved. Another way to understand being moved is we shall not be destroyed. We shall not be shaken because God is in the midst of our life. Amen? So important with, as a people of God, you know, sometimes we, we, we come into services and, oh, I wonder who's going to be here today. And, you know, when you go to a you know, church or service, can I tell you, that if God is in the building, anything can happen. And the key of the church, amongst, now we go after, we want to do things well, we, we want to have, you know, great uh, sound, and we're so grateful for these amazing new speakers, and don't worry, soon they're going in the ceiling, so all of you can see the worship leader over here when it's blocked off. But, you know, we want to go after excellence, we want to have things sharp and running great, but above all that, above everything of our own efforts or strivings is the anointing and the presence of God. That is everything. My uh, wise words do not, do not necessarily change people, if they're wise at all. It's not me or a person or it's not just the sound coming from the instruments that, that makes the worship anointed, it's that they've got on their knees before God during the week, crying out, saying, God, it's your presence that makes the difference. It's your anointing that makes the difference. And in the same way here, if God is in this place, it's going to be okay. If God is in this place, there is joy, there is peace, and there is life in Jesus' name. And I believe that what, what draws people and what will continue to draw people to this house will be people will come to this place, and it's been prophesied over our church, And we'll say we're here because God is in this place. Because this is a place where Jesus is moving and things are happening in people's lives. Amen. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The next verse, if we go on. The nations raged. So here we go. They start to say some of the stuff happened. And the, the nations were raging. The nations were raging. Kingdoms were moved. 
They're saying, we've seen the wars and the violence and the battles. And, but when God just utters his voice, the earth melted. In other words, just one word from God can change everything. They then go on and say, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Another translation says, the Lord of the, the, Lord of, of the armies of heaven is with us. So they're making a declaration in a time of war. Knowing stories of old, they would know where God fought for them in battles, where God used Gideon, 300 men, to take on tens of thousands of people in war, where God used Jehoshaphat to worship in a time of war, and God confused the army, and they had a victory. Knowing the victories in the past, this declaration that the Lord of heaven's armies, in other words, there's more for us than against us. There is more for you than against you. Amen? You are never a minority with God. You plus God always equals majority. And with God, you can always overcome. If God is for you, amen, who can be against you? The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, again, reminding people of what God did in Jacob's life. Jacob wrestled with God and and got his blessing. and, And the same God that did that is with us. And he is our refuge. We see it again for the second time. Selah, which means to pause and reflect that God is our refuge. We go on to the next verse. This whole theme we see of God being our helper throughout. And at the end, we're going to pray as we come to kind of the, the, the last passage. It's a time where you can cry out to God and acknowledge that He is the helper. He is the one that fights for you. And He is the one who can make a way where there seems no way. Come behold the works of the Lord. Come and behold. Come and look upon the works of God, what God has done. Remember what He's done for your life. I'm so grateful for what God has done for us. I'm so grateful for His love and His grace and His goodness for us. It says, remember the works of the Lord. I've found when we remember what God did in the past, it gives us faith for our now and for our future. It can be so easy to forget the miracles of old, the great things that God has brought us through. But they say, behold the works. Remember what God has done, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end. He breaks the bow and he cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Here they are making faith declarations when they could be very soon on the brink of war or or in captivity. They're declaring faith. They're declaring that my God can make this war cease. That my God can put an end to this thing. That my God can break the bow of all those bow and arrows that maybe even then could have been facing where they were in that city. He breaks the bow. He cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. What are you declaring in your storm? What are you declaring? We sing that song. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Raise a hallelujah. Amen. A song that's about singing even in a storm, about declaring faith in a storm. There is power in the words that come out of our mouth. Proverbs uh, 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. Our words can either speak death, destruction, or they can speak life, bring life to things, bring hope, bring encouragement. We can speak death to relationships. Many relationships have been destroyed by the words that have been said. Or we can bring life to relationships, bring encouragement, bring hope. We can see the gold in people and bring life. And here they are in the storm, and they declare life. They declare that God is well able. 
Some of us have got to change the confession over our life that keeps saying, this is always going to be me. This is always going to be the struggle. And we're going to start to say that, hey, you know what? God is well able. God is well able in this situation. God is well able. He can make the war end. He can make a way where there seems no way. They declare faith. And the second part of that proverb scripture says, those who love it will eat of its fruit. In other words, we eat the fruit today of those words that we sowed yesterday or previously. Our words carry power. Amen. So let's be a people that declare life and declare faith. Amen. Faith is about agreeing with the word of God. That's faith. It's a confident trust in who God is and what he says. And declaring faith is declaring the word of God over your life, not just what my feelings are telling me. Who knows your feelings can go up and down. Woo, woo, woo. Like a roller coaster, especially in moments of crisis. This is where we've got to get on our knees, cry out to God in prayer, and declare what he says. Speak this incredible faith. I can remember to give you a quick story. Years ago, we were going to do a youth and young adult camp. And we knew that God had put it in our heart. We, we, we just knew, we decided we we're going to do a young adult, youth and young adult camp. And anyway, the campsite we had, had canceled on us. And now we needed to find another campsite. Now we had like, I don't know, six weeks to go. And, um, and, and one, of the, one of the team at the time who was organizing it said, Pastor Ben, we're going to have to cancel this camp. There's just no way we're going to find somewhere in six weeks. Everything is going to be booked out. And, and I just said, look, I believe that God has called us to run this camp. And if God has called us to run this camp, we are going to find somewhere in Jesus' name. So everybody, get on the phone. We're going to start making calls. We start calling campsites. Within half an hour, we're booked in a great place for a campsite. Why? Because of God's grace, but also because of faith. Going, you know what? No, this is what I believe. I'm not going to give in to that. This is what I believe. Another story will be uh, years ago, I was a school chaplain at a high school. And uh, we were running this big day called, it was called Chappy Day. It's basically a fundraiser so that you can continue on like pastoring in this high school because there was limited gum, government funding. So we put on lots of jumping castles and, and uh, all sorts of food and drinks. And, you know, that day would raise like between ten and $12,000, which would give us resource uh, to carry on chaplaincy work at the school. And uh, anyway, the weather was terrible, like the whole, the whole day, like in the, in the morning, you know, and um, a number of the staff that weren't Christian, this is a public school, a number of the staff, in particular the deputy principal, was like, um, hey, 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 Mr. Ben Chaplin, where's your God now? Look at this terrible weather on your big day for this chaplaincy and this Christian work in this school. Where is your God now? Anyway, I said, we're going to be just fine. You watch. You watch what's going to happen. It's not going to rain. The rain it, we're going to be okay. Everyone's going to get to hang out, play, buy stuff, have a great time. We're going to be just fine. I kid you not, at five minutes before the, the bell went for lunchtime, the clouds like just opened and this sun beams. This atheist deputy principal goes, the heavens have opened. The heavens have just opened over this, over this day. And I'm like, you bet they've just opened. And, and anyway, it, it did not rain for the entire lunchtime right up until we packed away the last trestle table. Then whew, it just completely poured after that. So funny. After that, they're all coming up to me. Oh, man, someone's looking out for you. Oh, wow. Look at what happened. But it's amazing faith. Just coming with faith, being sure when God has put something in your heart and going, no, what? No, what? No, I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to declare it in Jesus' name. Amen? So you all better declare it this afternoon when we have our pop-up service. <laughs> no rain in Jesus' name. The scripture goes on in verse 10 and 11 and this is really the where it all comes to it this is the the finale or the crescendo 
the climax. So after all of this, in, your, in the struggle, in the crisis, remember that God's your help. Remember that He's with you. And then verse 10 is, be still and know that I am God. I'm going to have the worship team up. Be still. It's interesting, this word, be still. It's defined in, in a few ways. One is to slacken from work, to cease work completely. Another, trans, another definition is to sink. You know, like you, you know, if you ever like got home from a big day and just kind of like sunk in your couch, that's literally this word: be still, to sink, to stop all movement, to stop work, to slacken, to cease, and to be still and quiet before God. Why? Why must we be still? stop what we're doing, and be quiet before God, because it's often in that place we can hear His voice. There can be so much noise going on. We can be on mission to mission, from this thing to that thing, our to-do list in our head of all the things we've got to do. But there's great power when we just stop. Be still and quiet. This might look like on your couch, With headphones, this might look like on your bed. This might look like on your knees. Just being quiet before God. It also means not to try and make things happen. To just take a moment to be still and to trust that He is God. To not to have to vindicate yourself or defend yourself, but to be still before Him. And to know that He is God that He's going to take care of it, that He is with us. We can be still, we can stop and be quiet and place our trust and confidence in God. And the Scripture says, I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, our safety, our fortress, the one who rescues us. Seller, be still and know that I am God. We're going to come into a time of worship now. And I want you to take a moment in God's presence just to be still. Whatever perhaps thing you might be praying or believing for or crying out for, whether you're walking through a deep, dark valley or you feel like you're on top of a mountain, why don't we take a moment to be still in God's presence to place our trust and confidence in God, knowing that He is our victorious one, a God who fights for us, a God who's our strength and our refuge. Why don't we stand to our feet?